Welcome back to Worldview. The Battle of Balcom, Anti-Fracking Movement's Tahrir Square. This is the Monday Line on Wednesday. I'm Dennis Campbell. Now, last Friday, a group of dedicated local citizens stood up against hydraulic fracturing or fracking for shale gas in the Sussex community of Balcom. Now, that's nearby the site of the decisive Battle of Hastings in 1066. The locals were once again overrun, but not by invading Normans, rather a Tory government hell-bent on pushing the controversial fracking process. The reward for locals' efforts to protect home and property when a Duke University's recent major study showed that homes within one kilometer of active wells have such high levels of methane migration their water is unsafe to drink is that drilling began in earnest on Monday. Now, on Friday, more than 100 specialty riot police, who, as a source told UK Progressive magazine, had most recently been in Northern Ireland fighting anti-Republican demonstrators who were hurling petrol bombs and stones, were called in to disperse a group of peaceful protesters. The Balcom 16 sat non-violently with arms locked to try and stop rigs from entering the site and fouling a nearby reservoir and river. The shale gas drilling company that owns the Balcom site's permit is Quadrilla. It, in turn, is owned by Lord Brown of the UK Parliament's upper chamber, the House of Lords. Now, this would be like a US senator owning an oil company, then writing policies to ensure he can do as he wishes. Now, come to think of it, that's exactly what the US Congress does. Now, Quadrilla began transporting equipment and hazardous chemical materials late last week to this heavily secured site to begin drilling in secret. Outnumbered by police at least five to one, the peaceful protesters were set upon in a coordinated thuggish attack in which at least three members of the police resorted on camera to the use of pressure point release tactics that many described as torture at worst and an overreaction at the least. The Balcom 16 were arrested and will appear on the 14th of August in Crowley Magistrates Court. Francis Jenkins, one of those arrested in an exclusive interview, told Worldview Show, the man's screams of pain and use of excessive force even disgusted the members of the media present. Close quote. Now, a few national news outlets picked up the story, but most late Friday were still in royal baby mode, so the incident got little coverage. But the government was certainly blanketing the media, promoting the wonders of fracking. Indeed, Tory Energy Minister Michael Fallon was quoted on Channel 4 News as saying in rebuttal to claims by Friends of the Earth about earthquakes, well, earthquakes from fracking are not going to be allowed. He even looked a little bit like the comic strip Little Abner's Mammy Yoakum. She would defiantly say, I has spoke. Now, a complicit UK national media has been lazily dragged along by this Tory government into the belief that fracking is a gold rush that solves all our energy needs. The Tories indeed proposed the globe's most generous tax benefits of 30% to frackers. They claim there's nothing to see here with the quadrilla Lord Brown connection, or the fact that Chancellor George Osborne's father-in-law is a key oil and gas lobbyist for a BP Shell coalition think tank, and the chief architect of PM Cameron's re-election strategy, all are running solidly with the oil and gas bulls. The Sussex Local Council and Environment Departments bowed to outside political pressure and simply ignored legitimate resident environmental concerns. In excess of 900 residents submitted comments protesting drilling. The government even allowed the issuance of a radioactive material transport permit. Why, you say, was that needed? <clears throat> oh, well, there's only been radioactive radon gas and uh, uranium-226 found in the fracking water coming back up these wellheads. So that lorry beside you as you sit stuck in traffic with your pregnant wife? Well, it can only kill you and your unborn baby. But hey, drill, baby, drill. And adding icing to this shit cake, before going on summer recess, the Tories proposed a bill saying local planning authorities will no longer have the ability to do their job and protect the citizenry when they raise planning concerns about oil and gas exploration. Only the National Environmental Agency and Energy Agency can issue permits and block them from now on. And yet, there's one element to this crisis that goes underreported. Almost a millennium after the Normans overran Hastings, this one site could become the anti-fracking movement's Tahrir Square. Like Mubarak, police overreach threatens to awake a sleeping giant populace. Thuggishness against peaceful protesters for no apparent reason has dire consequences because it awakens the people.
Ask U.S. Congressman John Lewis, a Democrat from Georgia, how being thuggishly beaten atop the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Alabama energized and awakened the populace to the horrors of racial discrimination. Ask those watching the secret police attack on horseback and camel in Tahiria Square and the epic battle with stones and petrol bombs that ensued for three days. Remember that image of Well Ghanim crying on national television for those killed for protesting after he himself was held for 12 days for no reason? The next day's crowds were the largest ever seen, and 48 hours later, Mubarak was gone. Could the image of the young men being tortured for sitting by a locked gate by police have the same awakening effect? Time will tell, but it does not take much to swing opinion, and police overreach is usually the cause. We need to listen to voices expressing real concerns such as Dr. Anthony Ingrafia. He's the Distinguished Professor of Engineering at Cornell University, and he said about fracking, quote, 6.5% of all well casings fail initially, leading to methane migration. 60% of them fail over 20 years. They all fail over time. Why doesn't the industry fix this systemic problem? Because they can't. So with a 100% wellhead failure rate leading to methane migration in the water supply, why push this risky exploration process? Because there's money to be made. As Andrew Chiva said in an interview to air Tuesday evening on Worldview Show, the Tories will do anything for short-term financial gain. He's right. Ask the NHS about the £1 billion privatization contract announced just last week. What else is for sale here, David?